the golden threads of connectedness. I see your strength and vulnerability, and I vibrate in rhythm with both. I see your determination to do your duty, not bad, restrictive duty, but beautiful, caring duty, with your body longing for rest, and I vibrate in rhythm with both. I see you in your aching body, vulnerable in pain, determined not to complain, and I vibrate in rhythm with you. I see you in your hurting loneliness and uncertainty, and I vibrate in rhythm with you. I see your vitality, joyful, adventurousness, stepping boldly into a world of challenge and opportunity, and I vibrate in rhythm with you. I see you in your cautious venturing, widening, expanding, your circle, afraid of being rejected, of judged, hoping for new soulmates to walk into old age with, and my heart vibrates in rhythm with you. You are beloved. And I know that you see me. Strength hiding brokenness. And your heart thrums for me. You see me tired. Determined that will will triumph over exhaustion. And you see each other. I see you seeing each other. A look, a glance, a hurried, how is he today? A quick shake of the head and downturned eyes. And the hard edges of our boundaries soften, touching each other and embrace with nothing needing to be said. We ride the golden threads of connectedness. We see the actual other. And our energies weave and dance throughout this place and throughout each other. Let us join our voices together in a hymn called Let Me Walk With Thee. And I want to just say a word about the word thee. This does not refer to God although it was capitalized by accident. Um, it refers to the divine essence in each person. So let us join together in singing, Let Me Walk With Thee. Let me walk with thee, let me see the world that you see. Let me know the paths you have trod. Let me walk with thee. Let me see the world as you see. Let me know the paths you have trod. If you have been shaped by fear and terror, may I be a safe refuge for thee. If you have been shaped by hunger and longing, may I offer you food for this journey. Can you walk with me? Can you see the world that I see? Can you know the paths I have drawn? Can you walk with me? Yeah. <laughs> 
each walk alone on this path of life and have our own struggles to bear. Yet if I can see just for a moment through your eyes, it's joy that our souls will share. Let me walk with thee, let me see the world as you see. Let me know the paths you have trod. Let me walk with thee, let me see the world as you see. Let me know the paths you have trod. Please be seated. Welcome, everyone. In particular, we would like to warmly welcome anyone who might be new to our congregation or nearly new. Does anyone feel confident enough to stand up and say who they are? Not sure. <laughs> Go for it. Thank you so much for being here, and we would really look forward to chatting with you after the service. There will be soup downstairs. Lovely. Welcome, welcome. We are the North Shore Unitarian Community. In this community, we celebrate people from all walks of life. No matter how you make your living, how you experience the sacred, no matter who you are, whom you love, you are welcome here. We are grateful to be on these sacred and ancestral lands that were the home of the indigenous peoples long before white settlers arrived. And we are grateful for the gifts and challenges of walking the path of this land and learning of the culture that is home to so many of us, those whom we know and whom we don't know. As an invocation and signal that our time here is holy, will you please join me as we light our chalice? We kindle this flame as a symbol of our gathering. May the light of understanding illuminate our darkness. May the warmth of sharing bring us peace. Thank you all. I'm now going to take a few moments, uh, it's something I like to do, which is invite everybody to consider, are there any particular joys, sorrows, worries, concerns in your life, a name or a situation that you would like to hold up to be held in the hearts of this congregation? Anyone have any names that they would like to put out? Janelle. Okay, Jim? Janelle. Janelle, of course. Janelle. Julia. Julia. Nina. Nina. Peter. Peter. Matthew. Matthew. Ruth. Ruth. Margot. Margo. Nyla. Nyla. Angela. Angela. Diana and Dieter, yes, I'll mention that later. Anything else? I would like to say that the situation in the Middle East is very deeply on my heart. And the situation for so many who've lost homes, properties in the States, whether it's Florida or Northern Carolina. Anyone, any other names that are on your heart? Jill. Jill. Joan. Joan. Okay, anyone else before I start? Okay. So we're going to take a moment. Just ground yourselves. Take a deep breath, being present. Trying for a moment to 
Be willing just to put aside for a moment the normal stresses of your life. Just for a while, we can pick them up again when we walk back out through this door. As we close our eyes, we can imagine light around us. Shimmering, vibrating. We know this is a benevolent, beautiful light. In this light, we join our hearts with caring. We empathize with those who experience sorrow, terror, are trapped in worry or anxiety. And we experience the delight of small feet, small hands, exploring the world afresh. We hold in our thoughts and our love, Janelle, Julia, Nina, Peter, Matthew, Ruth, Margot, Nyla, Angela, Diana and Dieter. We hold all those who have been displaced due to flooding, who are scared, who don't know what to do next. We hold in our hearts all those who are displaced and terrified by war and violence. We hold all those in the Middle East and ask, oh my Lord, we ask for a miracle. We hold Joan in our love. Blessed be. We're going to do a hymn, uh, How Could Anyone Ever Tell You You Were Anything Less Than Beautiful, several times throughout this service. It's one of my absolute favorite hymns, as it is for so many of you. Um, I'll tell you a short story which kind of relates to this service. Most of you know that we have a son who developed schizophrenia at the age of 18 and was hospitalized with acute psychosis for about two years in Riverview. My husband and I and other family members would visit, visit him every day. For a lot of that time, he couldn't talk, he couldn't walk, he was uh, terrified. And I would just touch him. Gradually we got to a point where he could walk out with us and we would be in the car together and I would sing him this song, even though he couldn't respond and didn't, wasn't able to do anything or respond in any way. One day, however, he came out and he lifted his head as we were getting to the car and he started singing, how could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful? And I was just, my, my got goosebumps all over my body. It was so incredibly powerful. And I just want to tell as well a tiny story about Ben as he got better. He didn't have any money. He was barely allowed out on his own. But it was his birthday. And he really wanted to have some money so he could spend it at the tuck shop in the hospital. And so I gave him, he wanted $30. Thirty dollars was a lot of money for Ben. And so I gave it to him, and we were out walking, and we went to a mall, 
And I said, Ben, you hold on to that money. Do you know what you want to do with it? And he said, yes, I want to get a video game or something. And then I went into a store and I turned around and Ben wasn't there. My heart leapt. I was absolutely petrified. Where is he? What's going on? And I walked out of the store and he was sitting down on the ground next to a homeless person. I said, Ben, come on, let's get going. And he said, no, I'm chatting. Okay. So I sat down too and we chatted and this guy was just amazing and wonderful. And then I said, Ben, it's time for us to get going. And um, I said, let's go to the video store and we can, we can buy your videos that you want. And he said, oh, I don't have it anymore. <sighs> you had it only 10 minutes ago, Ben. And he said, no, that other guy needed it more than I did. And uh, I said, Ben, it's just going to go on drugs. And he said, Mom, he is a person just like you. Duly chastised. We went on with the day. So let us sing, how could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful? Thank you all. How could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you you were less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice that your loving is a miracle? How deeply you're connected to my soul? One more time. How could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful. How could anyone ever tell you you were less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice that your loving is a miracle? How deeply This morning's service, strengthening the golden threads of seeing, is the flip side of othering. Othering is primordial, instinctive, hurtful, alienating, isolating, and ultimately leads to violence and war. In every aspect of life, I believe that we have a choice as to whether we other or accept and see. It might be in the form of judgments, thoughts towards another or ourselves. We have a choice here. Do I hang on to my judgment? Do I hang on to my fear, repeating it, tasting it, ruminating on it until I am sick? Or do I see it, notice it, ah, there you are, and let it go. There are places where we can bask in being seen and loved. Here, in this place, for example. It is a place of understanding. No, it's not perfect. We all know that. Many of you have lived decades of your life and gone through the tragedies of life. You have wept and been comforted, raged and been heard. Come here, ragged with stress, and been seen and been loved. And if you are either brand new here or relatively new here, know that you too are being quietly seen and loved. You are held by those around you. It is harder, though, to know how to reach out to those whom we do not know, which Ben, my son, went charging straight through. But we know we are vulnerable, who we know are vulnerable, and need our aid and asylum. And there are people and places that do just that. 
In the spring of 1973, a small group of women were taking a women's studies course in Capilano College. For this group, studying was not enough. The course and the discussions ignited a spark that could not be contained in the classroom. Women all around them needed more than ideas, more than discussion. They needed concrete resources and concrete support. The founding members responded to this need. They took their education to the streets and established the North Shore Women's Centre. Our own Julia Cavell joined this group to support this mission shortly after it was started. And I have invited Julia to say a word about her experience and introduce Michelle Dodds, the current Executive Director of the North Shore Women's Centre. Julia. I, okay. When I was just married in 1969, my husband was attending law school at UBC. I, I met a neighbor who invited me to a conscious raising the event at her home. She happened to be Jane Rule, local writer, feminist, and lesbian. She had me reading every current book on feminist issues for years afterwards, starting with Sisterhood is Powerful as an example. We moved to North Vancouver in 1975 to our new home. I saw that a seminar was being offered on sexism in the schools at Highlands United Church, and I rushed to attend since my philosophy professor was a, man, a main speaker. My core cohorts reminded me that I arrived there by bicycle, very pregnant. I joined the North Shore Women's Center shortly thereafter and held several positions within the new organization. I was the president in early 1980 and was sent as a National Action Committee delegate to Ottawa on behalf of our center. I visited and petitioned the Senate Commons Joint Committee on the, on the Constitution in the House of Commons on behalf of our group, along with many other women's organizations across Canada. The North Shore Women's Centre lobbied Lionsgate Hospital to allow legal abortions during that era, and after several years, we were successful. There were many other issues to work on, mostly in the legal and financial areas, as well as setting up safe houses for women and their children. After my marital separation in 1982, I attended BCIT for, bo for four years and then went out in the work world with little time for anything but finding my footing in a new career as a registered and certified financial planner. In 1982, I heard about the North Shore Unitarians and attended my first service at North Shore Neighborhood House. This blessed association was much needed for my psychological well-being as I was raising my two small children on my own without family support. Those years passed in a blur and my involvement with the North Shore Center, with the North Shore Women's Center, was only periodic. Now more recently, my two favorite communities have come together as I am retired and I am most, and it is most satisfying to have them closely aligned. I've never been happier. I want to thank you, Alison, for steering our North Shore Unitarians towards social action to the benefit of North Shore Women's Center. Introducing Michelle Dodds, she tells me she is honored to have worked as the executive director of the North Shore Women's Center since 1999. This appointment follows a Master of Arts degree in Women's Studies from Simon Fraser University, as well as community work in women's social justice and advocacy organizations, such as the National Action Committee on the Rights of Women and the Committee for Domestic Workers and Caregivers' Rights. 
Over her 25 years journey with the Women's Centre, she has been involved in numerous projects, events and partnerships. She has helped guide the organization through various transitions, such as the 100% core funding cuts to the Women's Centre in the 2000s, and more recently, the COVID pandemic. Since 2001, Michelle has chaired the North, Shore, North Shore's Violence Against Women Committee, which has community representatives from over 20 North Shore justice systems and service agencies. Michelle is passion, passionate about gender equity, as well as creating accessible community spaces and learning opportunities that facilitate social change. Michelle enjoys living in the Moodyville neighborhood of North Vancouver with her partner and their daughter. It is my great pleasure to introduce Michelle Dodds, Executive Director of the North Shore Women's Centre. She is a soft-spoken dynamo who has been instrumental in shaping the work of the Women's Centre over these decades. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you so much, Julia. That um, introduction seemed much shorter <laughs> when I passed it on, but thank you for those kind words, and thank you, Allison, as well, and thank you to everyone for inviting me here today and for your support um, over the years at the Women's Centre. It's really uh, made quite a difference and um, has helped so many women. Um, I am very pleased to be here this morning on the unceded traditional territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations. And our North Shore Women's Center is located uh, in the Lower Lonsdale community. I wanted to just share a little bit about some of the work that we do, but specifically in relation to some uh, women and girls community members that we have been able to provide support for um, and who in turn have enriched all of us who are involved with the organization. The first story that I wanted to share relates to women in the community who are homeless or at risk of homelessness. What we have learned over the years is that homelessness for women often looks very differently than for men, um, as women who are homeless or at risk of homelessness can be living in a variety of precarious housing situations, such as homes where there's intimate partner or domestic violence, uh, exchanging uh, sometimes sex for accommodation, couch surfing, staying in transition houses or shelters, living in their cars, and sometimes living outside. In all of these situations, women are extremely vulnerable and at risk for violence. We have tragically seen women in our community have their lives taken when living in these situations. In the last little while, we've been supporting a mother and her young um, adult or older teenage child who have been living outside for the last year within our community. They've had several difficult experiences, as you can imagine, which have led them to this situation, and they're very wary of trusting support services as a result. They really want their lives to change, but they feel stuck and haven't been able to find a way out. Of course, over this time, both their physical and mental health have greatly suffered. However, they work every day to make the best of their circumstances and even help others when they can. At our drop-in center, we support them both practically and emotionally. We provide a private bathroom for personal hygiene, changes of clothing for the seasons, and a place to launder their favorite items. We offer them food each day, uh, if possible, that they can easily heat up in our microwave. We have provided suitcases to store their items, thermoses to have warm liquids to drink, and journals to write in and process their thoughts. 
We have assisted them to explore their career opportunities through donated tickets to workshops and forums, have offered them a gently used laptop, and most importantly, we have regular conversations with them about everyday matters, just like new items at the grocery store or videos on YouTube. We've been told that this is the single most important offering we can give them as it makes them feel normal and part of everyday social life. We've worked with them for all these months without knowing their real names or identities as although they trust us, they are too frightened to share this information. We now consider them as part of our daily lives at the center, and though we can't offer them a place to live, we know that they consider the North Shore Women's Center a home. Thank you. That's part one of, of Michelle's talk. Let's now sing again one verse of How Could Anyone Ever Tell You? <coughs> I just wanted to share another uh, reflection and, and story of um, some women from our community that we're supporting. We do also support many new immigrant and refugee women. Uh, in addition to adapting to new cultures, systems, and languages, most face additional barriers, and this is particularly true if they're experiencing intimate partner violence concurrently. In the last year or so, we have directly supported many women who arrive in Canada on tourist or visitor visas where their husband is the main applicant. Due to the nature of the violence, which can include coercive control, financial abuse, emotional and verbal abuse, and physical and sexual abuse, the mom and her kids don't feel safe at home. Unfortunately, they're dependent on their husbands for their immigration status, and there's not much that the women can do. We provide, again, emotional and practical support to these participants. For many of them, the violence is such that they need to find a transition home to stay at. This is really hard to do as transition houses are full most of the time, especially when trying to find space for multiple children. Inevitably, they will have to leave the North Shore community to find a transition house to stay at. After a few months, if a woman cannot afford rent, there's not much that can be done by service providers to find accommodation. Most of the time, the women we support don't even know the status of their immigration process, as this information is managed and controlled by their husbands. We need to help them uh, with immigration law, family law, and to try to find a way to support themselves. Even when they have a work visa, they can't often find a job that will pay enough to allow them to have childcare. Often, their only recourse is to seek refugee status. For those women whose homelands grant most power and status to their husbands, they can't go back to their families, as once they do, their husband will have complete control over the lives and movement of the moms and the kids. The situation is even worse for women whose immigration status is undocumented. We are supporting one woman in this situation who has a new baby and is trying to figure out her limited options while living in an abusive home. 
For another woman that we supported, one year into her journey, there is a happier outcome. This woman and her children were able to stay in a transition home and then move to second stage transition housing where they can stay for a longer period. She is now in school to become an education assistant. Her kids are happier. They occasionally saw their dad after some conditions were lifted on his visitation restrictions. He has now left the country but is paying some child support. She has refugee status and has also received some financial support through that process. Her goal is to get a job soon in the same school district as her children so that she can continue to care for them on her own. Please join me as we sing together again one more time, How Could Anyone Ever Tell You? And the last story that I'd like to share with you this morning is about the youth who participate in one of our programs at the North Shore Women's Center called Flip the Script. Flip the Script is a 12-hour evidence-based sexual assault resistance training program for teen girls and young women that cuts their risk of sexual violence by more than half. Flip the Script with EAAA is, a, is uniquely effective because it emphasizes that many perpetrators are known to their targets. Because most sexual assaults against youth are perpetrated by fellow students, friends, acquaintances, or romantic partners, Flip the Script with EAAA addresses the challenges that come from coercive pressure rather than just physical force. Unfortunately, 30% of girls and women age 15 plus have experienced sexual assault at least once. 47% of sexual assaults are committed against women and girls age 15 to 24. When the Violent Crime Severity Index across Canada rose in 2021 by 5%, the rate was largely driven by increase in police-reported level one sexual assaults, which had increased in BC by 15%. The components of, Flip the Script, the components of the Flip the Script program teach young women the triple A's, assess, acknowledge, and act. They learn to assess danger cues, acknowledge the myths and emotional barriers to, act to assessing risk, and to act to enforce their boundaries and physically defend themselves if needed. At the North Shore Women's Centre, we see the impact that sexual assault has on young women. In one of our summer camps, a young teen participated participant was acting out regularly, creating discord and kept leaving the group unexpectedly. After a few days, her mother contacted us to let us know that her daughter had just disclosed to her a sexual assault that had occurred months prior and directly explained her risky behavior and altered emotional state at home and at school. The Flip the Script participants also share their experience with us after having taken the program and tell us about the impact of the program for them. I just wanted to uh, read some of the uh, quotes that they've shared with us. One grade 10 student in North Vancouver shared, my biggest takeaway from this program is how to stop from having intercourse you don't want. 
Another North Vancouver High School student said, I realize that my past relations were coercive and that I should have trusted my gut. I have guy friends that tend to get too touchy and today's session really helped me to learn how to deal with that. Another uh, young woman shared, this program is important because we'll likely experience some situation at some point. This program is important because we as teens need the knowledge about sexual assault. And the last one, my biggest takeaway my biggest takeaways are how to use your body in uncomfortable situations, how to say no, and be brave. So we are really inspired by these young women who have taken part in the program and, and shared their experience with us. Um, and we hope to continue to be there for them in different ways to continue to provide the support. So thank you again for having me here this morning, and um, I hope to talk with you further. Thank you. We're going to join now in a song which is called We Will by Anne Reid. Um, we'll all sing it. I'll be leading some of it and it should say where I sing it and where you sing. I think I'm just, it, it's a little bit long so just stay in your seats. And if you want to use it as a meditation, please feel free. It's a long road we've set our feet upon It's a long road we've set our feet upon And with loving hearts we walk on Loving hearts walk on We will walk we will walk on Bridges are built with open hands Bridges are built with open hands We begin to heal the world we begin to heal the world. We will heal the world. We will heal the world. We will heal the world. When the sun shines to all of us there on the road a rainbow in front of us wherever we go wherever we go take a single flame and pass it on take a single flame and pass it on it's enough to light the way It's enough to light the way We will light the way We will light the way We will light When the sun shines through all of us, there on the road, a rainbow in front of us, wherever we go, wherever we go. All the souls who came before are standing here. All the souls who came before are standing near. You can hear them whisper low. You can hear them whisper low. We will walk with you. 
sounded wonderful. So as you might suspect, the offering this week will be taken in support of the work of the North Shore Women's Centre. So will the ushers please come forward to take the offering? Thank you. Just a quick note, um, the baskets that we have now, we, we've been doing, I think all of last term, please feel absolutely free to, on a regular basis, make a habit of bringing either food or toiletries for that basket, and then Julia takes it to the North Shore Centre. At one point, somebody said to me, well, they get lots of stuff, is this really necessary? Well, I called Michelle. And she said, oh my goodness, it is so necessary. At that point, they had already run out of their budget for the month. They had no shampoo and maybe no toothpaste. I might be making that shampoo. up. Shampoo left. There is absolutely enormous need. They are supporting 125 women, which really means 125 families, um, at least. I'm sure there's a lot more. 
that are involved in that center. Your gifts, your contributions, whether it's on a Sunday morning in terms of cash or whether it's through the food and the toiletries program, really does make a difference. Thank you all. Um, so, also soup. We have uh, Diane, is she here? No, she's probably downstairs guarding, making sure that the soup doesn't burn. Um, so we have a soup lunch downstairs created by Diane. Thank you so much, Diane. Everybody feel free to go downstairs and have that. Now, if some of you find it hard to get downstairs, you need to use a washroom. We have a new washroom up here. You go through Johnny's office into there and there's a beautiful um, washroom that's also wheelchair access. Next week's service is Scared Sacred. Bruce, do you want to come up and say a word about Scared Sacred next week? Hi, everyone. Well, I, the problem is I don't want to give too much away, but I see that I've already given a fair bit away in the, uh, in the little squib there. So it's going to be, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this fellow, Rob, Rod Serling, and his show, The Twilight Zone, which a lot of you are familiar with. And, but we're mostly going to talk about what, how what scares us tells us a lot about who we are. So we're going to delve into our own fears, and then we're going to kind of deal with maybe how we can be a little less frightened sometimes in some areas of our life. Anyway, it should be fun. Thank you. So as we prepare to leave this wonderful place, uh, let us join our voices together singing, No Other People's Children. Will the choir please come up? Please rise. Get to this place where we could look at each other's face and see anything but beauty and understanding. I want to know who you are and face the suffering that keeps us far apart. I can't live truly so the world or take away your pain but my listening and I will think you can hear me saying you are my neighbor you are beloved you are perceived for who you are you are my neighbor you are beloved
closing words. Breathe in deeply to the knowledge that you are surrounded by love. You are love. And you have the ability to love others deeply and powerfully. You are blessed. Go from this place and bless others. Let us conclude by taking our chalice into our hearts and into the world. We extinguish this flame, but carry with us the light of vision and the warmth of hope. The world calls us to live with depth, meaning, and purpose. We go forth with courage and love. Just before we do Circle Round for Freedom, there was an announcement that I forgot. We'd mentioned Deanna and Dieter. You know the floods that we've been having? Well, at some point yesterday, I got a text from Deanna saying, the water's coming in our walls. They rent a, they rent a suite, and not only was the water coming in the walls, but it was a foot deep. So they need a place of shelter until they can find another place to rent. I'm just wondering if there's anywhere in the, anyone in this community that has an apartment for Dieter, Deanna, and two dogs? Smallish dogs. <laughs> Wonderful dogs. Who never shed. <laughs> no. Okay, let us join together singing Circle Round for Freedom.